Okay, we're going to continue now with uh, our study of prototypes, and we're through the beginning parts of uh, what does it all mean, and then we're through the, the heart of it, how do you put a proto de declaration together, and the different pieces that make that up. We've also looked at is connect linking. Uh, however, uh, there's one piece I'd like to cover a little bit more, and that's the special feature we have when we connect up to a script node, and then we'll continue on with uh, external prototype there. Okay, so, oops, let's uh, try again here. That's closer. We go through the is connect and then we find a pair of slides on connecting an embedded script. And this is a very common design pattern. It's something that you often need to do when you create a prototype because if you think that a prototype declaration takes an existing node in X3D and adds some new functionality to it, well, Often you can do that just with regular X3D elements, uh, the X3D nodes connecting to that one special node, but quite often to get that extra secret sauce going there, that extra capability, you'll need a script node to handle the whatever complexities or whatever sophistication you want to put in that new node. So wrapping a proto interface with a node and then a script that follows it to help customize it is a frequent practice. So uh, to do that, we've uh, helped uh, support support that activity right in X3D Edit. So you can see the, the regular checklist. Of course, you got to name it, and you got to give it an interface, and you got to give it the first node. Very important. And then finally, this part here of connecting the script and hooking it up and uh, to the interface is what we want to do next. Okay, so let's look at what the interface looks, uh, how it appears to you as a user. We start with the uh, editing the prototype declaration. We give it a name. And then we can enter each field and the values that it has, the type, access type, and the value, and get those in. And we'll see in a moment that there are several ways to do that. Now, once we have that stuff entered in, then we can go ahead and click this button right here, which says, give me a script node, and hook it all up with fields, uh, hook its fields up to match the prototype interface and connect it with isConnect. So this all gets auto-generated right here. Boy, that was a lot of code we didn't have to type in. So, so let's try that. Okay. So I'll go back out now to X3D Edit and uh, first we'll look at uh, an example that appears this way and uh, no we won't let's just go right to the interface so uh, Jeff here your your favorite note is uh, index face set so uh, we'll say okay let's make a new index face set we see that right here and how did I make this well let's uh, Cut this all out and recreate it. I'll go to the palette for X3D and we'll take our brand new scene that we created with the uh, start a new scene button and then we'll drag and drop in a proto declaration. And so what does it want? Well first it says well give me a new name for this new prototype. So let's call it new indexed face set. And then let's start giving it some fields. Why don't we start with uh, counterclockwise. And its type will be a Boolean, single field. And access type, well, let's see, initialize only. And probably a default value of true. So let's check that out. Let's confirm that by going 
to our tool tips. You can do that from within X3D Edit or just load them up locally. So I'll just pull them up here so we can keep that panel up hot. And uh, we'll take a look for some of the other fields here. And uh, you probably know what some of those are. I just click the plus button and uh, here come the tool tips. So index face set is our guy of interest here. And uh, tooltips are pretty big, so as that loads in, we'll get to see the node we want. Here we go. Okay, so counterclockwise is initialize only, type boolean, a default of true. Similarly, we have a couple of other boolean fields. Besides counterclockwise, we also have convex and solid. So let's look at those three and heck let's even add a fourth one, crease angle. Those four. Let's say those are the ones we care about that we might be modifying on our uh, on our prototype that we want to design. So there are several ways to do it. This is good. Let's exercise them. One is uh, uh, I can hit the plus or minus key right here to add or subtract fields. So let's add one. Oh, I escaped right out of it. Start over again. New index face hat. Counterclockwise. Type is SF pool. Initialize only. Initial value true. Okay, and then we can add another one right here. Convex. And that's also an SF pool. Also initialize only, also true. And we'll give our node a, some app info, which is like a tooltip. Uh, uh, this will be a new test of the next face set. And I will not hit this magic button yet because we want to keep adding fields till we're done. So we could add some of the fields and you could just keep going one at a time if you like this kind of a table approach. But let's save it out and add some more. And we see that when we saved out this prototype, there we go, we got not only our prototype declare, which matches the close tag there, but we also got a proto interface which matches there, and a proto body, which matches there. And we further received uh, the key node in the scene and some comments to tell you, okay, the first one's important, the second ones don't render, so our comments cue us to what we need to do. And then Finally, we also got the two field definitions that I entered a moment ago, and there they are. So, okay, so let's keep populating this prototype that we're building here. So our next way to do it is, uh, well, let's check it. Looks like my value didn't get saved, so I'll do space. <coughs> Excuse me, and notice it's prompting me here. Uh, in the text editor for what else we might want. So, okay, value, yeah, that's what I want. Then I'll hit control space bar and it should uh, prompt me again. Oh, I guess not because this one's not type aware. So we'll just type in true. And that's good. Okay, save our work. Now here's an yet another way, good old cut and paste. Copy, paste, and say our next field would be solid, which had the name same. Okay, so there's three of the four. Now the fourth field, let's do by drag and drop. And this time, I'll use the uh, field button from the palette. And uh, we'll drag that in. Let's see. Okay, right there. Okay, so what's our, our next one? Crease angle. And this is a SF float. And I 
think we're initialized only. Let's check the tooltips. Sure enough, crease angle is initialized only as well. Okay, so back to X3D edit and our initial value is zero. Okay, it prompted us on that. How great. Um, okay, so there we are. Different ways to enter the fields. I'll save it. Let's reopen our proto declare in the editor. And if you think about it, we should see all those fields, right? Sure enough, there they are, getting picked up. Okay, so are we set to go? We have a prototype. We have four fields. We would like a script to go after that. We should rename this field. And I'll rename that by, actually I could retype it, but instead we'll right click. We'll go to rename element. Indexed face set. And we'll finally go back out to the uh, outer interface and tell it, yes, I want to insert a script node. is connect links. So that's the guy I'm going to select. Here we go. Doesn't do anything until we say okay, let's you back out of it. Okay, so let's check it out now. There is our proto declaration. There's our proto interface. The four fields are unchanged. There's our first node, which is the index face set. And then it, here it is, inserted the script. It used the proto name and just tucked the word script on the top of that since uh, you'll likely need a, a, a name to route it. And then here we go. We have all of these fields both defined for the script and connected. So at this point we could edit our script and I didn't want to do that. I want to edit it, not delete it. Try again, edit it, and sure enough, we could put in our ECMAScript code right here. Or we could uh, hook up an external file. And that file would have a .js extension. Okay, so there we go. And uh, Lauren, could you uh, take some notes here? that uh, why don't we improve our auto script generation a little bit to include this comment to either insert code or hook up an external.js script and let's also prompt it to uh, put in a comment that says uh, any route routes from script to the first node in the proto body, go here. And uh, final comment would be uh, why don't we say give it a def name if internal routing is needed. Okay, so we keep trying to make it more and more of a template, more and more of a cookbook, so you can fill in the blanks and just quickly get through your work and get stuff done. We could probably uh, imagine a few more features to add to this, like maybe um, uh, adding that route or creating an external file or I think a to-do here would be, gee, wouldn't it be nice if we added a further wizard that said, given that I'm one of these nodes, given a first node, have it define all of the fields for you. 
Okay, if we know that we're writing a prototype that wraps an index face set, why not go through that whole list of, of fields and uh, take them and craft these guys for you automatically. So please uh, record that in today's notes to Lauren and uh, automatic creation of fields based on knowing this to generate that. And maybe by the time you see this video, that's a future feature we'll have implemented in here. Okay, so this is how we do it. These are the techniques. Let's go back to the slides now and see if we captured everything on how to use scripts. Okay, we'll go back to slide one. Did we give it a name? Yes. Did we give it fields? Yes. Did we give it a first node? Yes. And then did we give it script afterwards that automatically? Yes. emphasize that. Okay, that might be slightly clearer. All right, great. So I think we're ready now to move on to the next topic, now that we can see all the tool support and the details of this pattern. So the next major part of uh, prototypes is external prototypes. And it's very similar to the proto-declare that you've already seen and learned about. What the external proto-declare does is it allows us to avoid redefining that whole declaration and instead simply point to it so that a new scene can take advantage of that uh, separate file, separate X3D scene, and the prototype defined in there, and hook it together. Okay, so uh, there are multiple benefits to that, uh, reuse being the most obvious one. Avoiding versionitis is another important one, because you can have your single latest, greatest, bestest copy in one place, rather than taking copies and having here and there, and then, oh, we fix this one, but what about the other, and the other for that, how do we keep them synchronized? It gets too hard. So having one master, and then use external proto declares to pull it in is a much better way to go. Okay? Um, now you're not st stuck with a single external proto declare. You can have uh, multiple uh, external proto declares if you want in a single scene. You can reuse lots of scenes. So, sure enough, the uh, X in X3D, it's very extensible. You can use multiple external proto declares. Now, what are the details of how to implement? Well, we have uh, field definitions, just like before, to give the browser that's loading this external proto declare a hint at what is the signature of the original prototype. Now the reason we do that, you could say, well that's a little redundant, isn't it? If I go retrieve the proto declaration over the network, it has all its fields defined in there. I mean, we just did some. So if we're pulling them in already, why would we redefine them here? That, that would violate the, the important design rule of do it once. Every time you have more than one way to do things, that could be a way to screw it up. Well, certainly you can screw this up if you get those values wrong. However, there is a benefit to putting those field definitions inside of extern proto declare. And the benefit is, at load time, when the browser is reading and creating this thing, it knows what fields are there. So what it does is it creates a placeholder node and you can start dealing with it with proto instances and while it's still loading the scene and maybe retrieving that prototype, it's already set up 
for routing to and from. So it can tell you, oh, your routes are legal. I'm going to allow you to route a value to that proto instance because the extern proto declare told me what the signature was. So I'm going to allow your proto instance to override an initialization value because you gave me the signature of it. All right, so that's the rationale for why do we do that. It lets this X3D browser get fully set up. And that way at load time, when it finally gets the prototype, all it has to do is confirm the match and drop it into place. And it doesn't have to change anything else in the scene because all of those connections are already set. So it speeds up our ability to uh, execute. Now, the do it once rule remains important. So sort of in a nod to that, what we did was we got rid of the initialization values in those field definitions within the extern proto declare saying, well, you tell me at runtime what my defaults are, they might get overridden anyway. I'm not going to have a conflicting thing because if, if proto declaration says my default value is zero, but my extern proto declaration says three, who's right? Is it the master version of it? It's the local override? Uh, some questions are better left unanswered, so we don't ask them. We just say, no values allowed in the field definitions of an external proto declare. So what does this look like? Well, here's our scene. This is uh, hopefully familiar. This was our uh, good old Art Deco example that we started this chapter with, that prototype and that example. So uh, here we have our external proto declares one, two, three that refer to uh, the ones in the excerpted example. In fact, there's a much bigger version of this, uh, something like 37 versions of uh, different prototypes are in the original one here, and these are just stripped down versions to allow you to examine them. So let's exit uh, the slides and go back to X3D Edit take a look at that extern proto declare. So here we go, Art Deco examples excerpt. And we've got one, two, three extern proto declares for each example. And you can see that it has a URL field there with multiple addresses. And that's about it. So let's open it up. And when I open it up, watch closely to see the colors change on the URLs as X3D Edit goes out to check the availability of these files. Okay, so you can see, hopefully you saw, it went quickly, just to uh, rewind, if, <clears throat> rewind if you missed it, that we went from black to green as it was able to um, retrieve each one of those. If it wasn't getting them, it would stay black until we timed out, and then it would uh, turn red after a timeout if the browser said, nope, can't get there from here. Okay, we have our good old uh, <clears throat> uh, editor here that lets us add or subtract URLs, very similar to what we've seen before. We can uh, edit those guys. We can also test them by loading or uh, launching them individually. Okay, so external proto declare. Let's review the interface here. This is what we're editing. We have to give it a name. We have to give it one or more addresses where to get it. And then we give it its field definitions, if any. Okay, so this one did not have any field definitions. So they're blind. Uh, let's look at one now that has it. And I have that queued up here. Well, let's just check. We won't get too far ahead of the slides. The next slide does show what I just demonstrated. Uh, uh, maybe an older version. In fact, that's uh, another good uh, note for today, Lauren, that uh, we should update this interface. It's uh, evolved slightly. And okay. And we'll hold that one for a second. And back to X3 
X3D edit. Let's find an extern product of Claire with uh, with some fields in it. Okay, so here in the uh, view frustrum example scene, if we look at the extern product of Claire there, we see that sure enough it does have a bunch of field definitions in it. And sure enough, it does list their name, and it does list their type, and it does list their access type, but it does not list values anywhere in here. So how can we edit this? Just as before, we can cut and paste, add fields to match. We can uh, use the field editor that we've seen before. And this one's kind of helpful because it will prevent us from using a proper, using an initialization value. So here where the field editor let us offer one before, notice it says no initial value for the child in the external part of the clear mode. Oh, okay, so it blocked us. It kept us from making the error of putting in a value right there. It's also prompting us for the app info and the documentation URL to help describe this node. And then the third way we can edit this is go right back to our parent. The external proto declare not only gives us the URLs up here, but gives us all the fields one by one. So we have this tabular approach. The column you're not seeing here is value. Why? Because values aren't allowed. And we can uh, further go into these guys in here. So we've tried to make it flexible and let you work the way that you want to and get things right. Okay, uh, I can see one or two feature improvements we might add to this that you might see next time. Uh, next one for the wish list here, Lauren, is uh, let's put a a button on the side of documentation to load that. Since that's supposed to be a URL, let's treat it like a URL, single URL, and let you load it so you can read it. Uh, so the way you would do this typically is put a tooltip for a pop-up and a URL for here's the help page, either local or online, to describe this prototype. So. I think we can declare a victory on this interface. If we review the field interface, we see the same thing. App info and documentation, you can describe each field. So there, there's a tooltip and uh, a help page if you need it, if you're docu fully documenting your new node that you have uh, implemented. Then I would say there's uh, yet another feature here for the wish list that we might add. The typical way that you might do these things is uh, we go to the prototype declaration in the first place. There we go, view frustrum prototype. So the way people often do this is they'll go to the proto declaration and they'll copy all of the fields and they'll paste them into the extern proto and then they'll manually delete the values because that's the only difference. Hmm, sounds like another opportunity for a wizard here. So let's add that to the wish list, uh, Lauren, and a, an extern proto declare a wizard that uh, you can either point to a prototype in the current scene or point to a prototype in an external scene and it just retrieves all of that signature for you and drops it in so you do, don't have to do that transcribing, don't have to do that editing. <clears throat> Stay tuned and uh, oh by the way on any of these wish list items if you're a very good programmer and impatient we like that <laughs> you're welcome to join us and maybe there's features that you want to build in our program. 
often these features uh, that we talk about. And they have to be written in Java, in the tool, but it is open source and anybody can do it. Some of the features can be implemented as uh, X3D scenes themselves, maybe new prototypes that we're just hooking up. So uh, the sky's the limit. If you see something you really like, we're interested in your ideas, please go ahead and send them in. And uh, if nothing else, we'll add them to the wish list. And as time permits, we'll keep adding more and more good stuff. OK, so I think we are just about set with uh, Extern Proto Declare. We saw where the app info and the documentation are listed. We described why they're important, um, not just helping authors, but encouraging further tool development. And we're finally up to the, uh, the pay dirt, the heart of the matter here, which is how do we create copies of these nodes and use them? That turns out to be pretty simple. It also turns out to be that's what our examples are all about. So this is a good break point. Let's uh, go back to the top of the chapter and do our check of where are we. Well, we've gotten all the way down through is and connect and external proto declare. So for the next session, we'll be finishing off this chapter and saying, here's how you use prototypes as instances. Here's how you put them in your scene. And here's some advanced examples of prototype design so that you can uh, build your own and use uh, existing libraries. So you don't have to build your own, but just take advantage of that good stuff and reuse it. OK, we'll see you next time. Hi, Don. Yes, Fred. Uh, I think we're meeting at 4 o'clock today.